All right, today we have a 4O100, which is like the uh, brother to the E4OD, out of a 2000 E350 uh, box truck, about a, a 12, 14 foot box truck uh, with 5.4, and it had no forward, only reverse. Uh, so this came in from a wholesale account, and we had one of those, uh, had one of like those monster tow trucks pick this thing up. Uh, he dropped in the stream, we backed it right up you know, onto drive on lift. Um, so we're going to open this up, I'm sure we're going to find an issue with the forward clutch. I uh, had very little forward, but again, good reverse. Uh, so I'll get a little closer into the, you know, onto the unit and we'll uh, open this up. But on the outside, uh, you have your two sensors uh, on the 4R100, um, input and output on the two wheel drive. And around here, of course, is your solenoid pack. And this piece right here is a bypass tube, and they've added this uh, to, for the transmission to get better lube when, uh, in the winter time when it's really cold out. All right, so let me get a little closer, and we're going to open this unit up and see what we find. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, so first we're going to take the uh, input and output sensor, uh, sensors off. I had loosened the bolts already. I had taken, uh, I was letting this drain so I have most of the pan bolts out, uh, extension housing bolts out just to get it to go a little quicker. Okay, so before we flip this up and take the pan down, I like to pull the uh, bolts out of the pump. Here is the uh, Teflon seal ring for the torque converter. So we're going to flip this up. I got two bolts in the pan. Still got a lot of oil coming out and actually drain this. Fluid smells real bad. Definitely is burnt. And right there is your pan. Doesn't look too good. So I'm sure we're gonna find those photo clutches probably smoked. Alright, filter. Okay, one thing I do have to get is my 30 Torx for the solenoid pack and the valve body is going to be um, 8 millimeter socket and 10, 10 millimeter socket at the, <coughs> at the ends. Okay. So I'll take all the 10 bolts out that are on the stud. Got 
T30 solenoid pad. Okay, here is the solenoid pack. That, of course, is going to be changed. Now we're going to take all the eight millimeters out and take the rest of the valve body apart. This section right here is the accumulator. accumulator section. Um, I put shift kits in all these E4Ds and 4R100s, so I take all the end plugs off, and even if you didn't uh, put shift kits, it's a good idea to uh, take the end plugs out and just eyeball these springs because the springs do like to break. I see that a lot. All right, here is the screen right here that goes into this plate, you kind of give it a twist and it locks itself in there. All right, we're going to take the uh, main valve body off now. two bolts in and later on we'll uh, when we're going through the uh, pump and drums and stuff I'll take I'll separate these two here but for right now I'll just take this off and put it aside All right, here's the main valve body and this section is a couple of valves and check balls as well All right, next we've got a tension plate down here. You leave this loose, you have no reverse. So we've got a series of check balls in here, we'll mark where they go. But first let me take the accumulator, I'm sorry, the piston for the band. Okay, I'll move this aside. Now we have uh, some center support bolts uh, that are also feed for the uh, clutches. There's three of those. 
Two were the same and one is... Okay, these go into the center support. And this one goes into like the overdrive. Feet the uh, overdrive clutch. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, mark all the spots where the check balls go. And then after we're just gonna turn the case over and uh, the check balls will fall out, but we have new ones anyway. Um, all right, so you know what I wanna do? I like to get rid of some of the soil. I just gotta gather up a couple more tools. So just give me a few minutes and I will be right back. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark uh, with a center punch where the uh, check balls go. This one, there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the earlier models, there actually is more. But this one, we dealing with eight. So now let's get this pump out. Can't really um, pry this thing out from the inside because there's no place really to do it. So let me get it moving like this. Take the uh, the coast drum out. All right, we'll go over all this stuff. Pump gasket. All right, now we're gonna get the uh, this here. You got your uh, overdrive planet in here. Let's get the sack ring out, get the large overdrive clutches out. Alright, these are actual little burnt, so they're going to be changed. to get we're gonna get the snap ring out and take the fourth piston out the overdrive clutch piston so we're gonna get the snap ring pliers okay so this this is gonna be replaced with a spiral ring because these pop out all the time Easy 4 of these and 4 all 100s. Alright, here's the piston. That's also going to be changed. 
All right, now we have the snap ring. I hold the center support in. bad but I like to change. Probably gonna wind up getting a batter kit. Okay. There's the direct. Here's the band in the unit. And let's see what these clutches look like. Yeah, these things are totally small. Not even in teeth left on them. These we will open up and look at. Finish breaking this down. Here is a bearing, and that bearing goes right there. Okay, the uh, what I do with this here is uh, I believe there is a like on the uh, 5R55S's, there is a uh, like a super tough snap ring that I changed because this one in here likes to break. And let me see how this is. This looks like it ground down a little. I'm going to evaluate this and possibly get a new ring here. But the hub looks okay. Let's get to find it out. It looks good. I'll tell you, this thing's a big truck with a five form. Surprised they use an aluminum planet like this. Here is the shell. What I do with this is I take the snap ring out and I take the, the sun gear out and I clean the shell up in the tank. A lot of times you're going to find around the inside. Uh, you find some cracks here. So I usually sh always change the shell. They're not very expensive. All right, and now we need a scribe to get the snap ring out. All right, that's for the holes in the rear planet, which we're gonna get right now. Okay, we got a washer on either side. snap ring pliers to get the small snap ring off the output shaft. Uh, I do not have those out. Okay. Alright, let's see how easily these come out. There's the snap ring 
That's on the output shaft. Now we can take the rear ring gear out. Okay. There's going to be a bearing that goes on the back of that. Bearing goes there. Alright, now we're going to take the snap ring for the low reverse out and pull everything out. this aside. Pot of steel and wave. Okay. So now what I've got to do, stand this up, take the tail off. Uh, we've got to get the uh, output shaft out and then we've got to take the bolts out of the back to drop the uh, the inner race, the race for the uh, low reverse clutch, which will allow the springs and piston to come out. All right, so let me, I'm going to have to probably change the camera angle because I'm going to be standing up high and you won't be able to see anything. So let me just uh, get that done and I will be right back. Okay, so we're going to take two bolts out that I have left in the tail. And I did want to uh, point out <clears throat> these two right here, these two bolts for this extension housing are shorter than all the others. So there's actually two different sizes that go in this extension. All right, I knocked the rear seal out already. So I'm gonna take this out. All right, I'm gonna take the park. Actually, let's take the, the shaft out first. Okay. Here is the output shaft. You got your park gear, you got your exciter ring for the output speed sensor. All right, so you know I can probably lay this back down now. Uh, yeah, just leave it up here like this. Okay, there's a bearing. Here, actually, you know what? Let me. It's this way you can see where where it goes. Let me just uh, switch angles again. Give me one sec. Okay, I wanted to just show you one thing, and then we'll continue. All right, so we mark the eight check balls where they go, and I forgot to mention in this spot right here. There is a ball and spring. Okay, the spring goes in first, and the ball. Uh, sits on top of that spring. Okay, so that's what that looks like here. So we'll move this aside. All right, now let's bring this down. Okay. All right, let me just uh, make sure you guys can see. Let me just uh, do one thing here. Just zoom in a little bit, I guess. Let me switch the angle. All 
Okay. All right, so we had this bearing, sits here. Okay, now we're going to release the parking pool. The, see, this is uh, uh, springy. So we're going to release that, take that out. That just kind of scoops that and hooks to the uh, hooks to the back of the uh, hooks to the case right here. All right, and this will come out, and this will come out. I'm going to take this piece out. I believe this is for lube. These one of these does come in the kit. I will change that. And now we have these bolts here. We're going to take out. And then I have to get my socket for that. here. I want to make sure that's nice and smooth. That looks pretty good. Springs. And we actually got to use some air and blow the piston out. Of course, I forgot to turn the compressor on. Give me one second. Let me do that. I'll be right back. All right, let's blow this piston out. Just want to take the bypass out, and for that, let's okay, the bypass is this this one here. Let me uh, see if I can back out a little bit. There's washers on here that are going to be changed. They all come in the overhaul kit. Actually, also what I do, all right, you have, uh, you actually have an O-ring on here, and pretty much what they do with the O-rings is they put the O-rings on for shipping purposes, so that's uh, so they don't lose the washers. That's actually why they they do that. It has the washer, so it's it's not going to leak. And this, I take a couple of screwdrivers here, and I pry this out. And there's some seals in here, and there's a ball and spring in here. So I like to make sure no debris or anything got caught in there. And I always take this apart. A little bit of a pain, but um, I get the O-rings come in the kit, and the washers come in the kit. So I just like to, you know, be very thorough and just make sure nothing is is clogged in here, especially when. You know, the transmission's in bad shape, the pan's real dirty. Alright, so these here. There's also a... Like a bowl and spring in here for a one-way valve. You want to make sure that that's free. Alright, get rid of that. Alright, so what I want to do now, I'm going to get rid of the case, because the case is totally stripped. 
And before I wash this case up, I'm going to flat sand this with my stone. Uh, and I guess that's really about it. I changed the case bushings. There's two case bushings, one upper and one lower. Uh, also, the case bushing is sold as one piece. I like to stick with the two piece. These are the case bushings here. All right, so we have one, I should have one, okay, one with three grooves, and then there's one with one groove, okay? The one with three grooves you would not get first because it'll sit further down in here. Actually, let me bring this case down. Closer. Whoops, wrong way. Okay. All right, so there's two bushings in here, and then there's um, like the lube hole. Uh, so the one with three grooves is going to sit, you know, here, uh, further in, and the one with the one groove is going to sit on the outside. So that's just how, how they go. I just wanted to point that out. Um, Alright, I guess that's really about it for the case, so let me just get set up here, get rid of the oil, get rid of the case, and uh, we'll continue opening the drums, the pump, we'll take a look at the forward clutches because they're wiped out, and go from there. Alright, so I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, so we'll start with the forward drum. First thing with the forward drum, there is a bearing. There's a couple of bearings on this one. One is here. You got a plastic washer. Actually, that's going to go here. And then you have another bearing that goes uh, in the center. All right, so we'll take these bearings, move aside. This whole forward clutch setup is no good. teeth on here this would have no reverse and only forward because these things are are locked on I mean this thing is that's how it is just like that and here's the wave but I'm gonna be changing this whole setup this is very flimsy all right then you have your bottom plate which uh, is probably gonna be okay to use over because that the bottom plate goes the wave goes and then it clutches and seals. So this whole thing all locked together. That is no good. Alright, this also has the Bell Bell spring. Let me see if I can get this out. This doesn't look that great either. Let's see if that'll come out. Make sure your splines in here where 
The input shaft sits, well actually, this one sits here, are, are good. Right, so that is the forward. Might as well take this one out now, get an overdrive planet in here. Just got to find the opening. Very small, thin snap ring in here. And there it is. There's that snap ring. This will pop off. You got a bearing. Sits here. Overdrive planet. Another bearing. Okay, these these used to uh, back in the day. These used to crack. The thing would come in, uh, have to be towed in, not moving, and this thing would have a nice little crack along that. Since then, they redesigned and they seem to be okay. There's another large plastic washer, okay, that's going to fit on here. And this part that's in here is the race for the overrun sprig, for this sprig here. All right, this I just leave right in. You know, no need, really need to take it out. It's not gonna fall out. There is a snap ring that holds it in, so I just leave that in. All right, again, with the front planet. A uh, forward planet, you got your plastic washer there. You have a bearing here, and you have a bearing here on the inside. Like that. Like that, we'll take this off on the side. I'm going to take this bearing, put it aside, all these washers. Okay, here's another bearing. Okay. We have the direct run. We'll start with this. Sure the, uh, check the direction uh, or the rotation of the sprig. This whole thing is going to pop right off. Okay, and you also have a plastic washer. And let's get the end cap for the sprig. We're going to put this whole thing aside. And we'll clean that up later. Okay, you want to check the ring grooves. Here, this looks pretty good. Uh, this little pushing looks worn out, so this is going to be changed. I always change that. And let's check out the clutches. All right, these are dark, as you possibly can see, and the teeth look worn, so they are going to be changed. Pretty much every clutch is going to be changed, so this is going to pull for a better fit. All right, now the, this drum rides on the center board here, so we have a plastic washer here. It's going to come off. Okay. And then you have two rings here, and this drum rides on here, just like that. Change these two rings. These things are generally, you know, pretty good. You got a bearing in here. You want to make sure this bearing is good. I've seen the, I've seen these bearings break up before, so definitely check that. Okay. The overrun. We got a spray here. Sprague seems kind of like it's locked in place, so we're going to give it a little turn. Pull it right out. It's got a couple of tabs up here, you know, some tabs that goes in, turns, and it kind of locks in place. So this we're going to put aside. Okay. This uh, on the shift kit, this. This also gets changed, this snap ring. They give you one in the kit, a different one. There's a molded piston here. That's going to get changed. That comes in the batter kit. And these right here, these are usually always good. 
which they are. Okay, here's another kind of like sinister board. Uh, here's the Belleville spring. And this piston will come right out. This is for the second clutch. Alright, now we're going to open the pump. Alright, so I'm going to open the pump. And the pump, we got a bearing here. And we got that black washer, black plastic washer that sits here. Alright, we got a couple of sealing rings. Of course, we're going to change those. And now we're going to open up and split the halves. Stator. You have your pressure regulator valve here, and you have pretty much your torque converter clutch operational valves here and here in the in the pump. Okay, now what I like to do. Let me see if I can if I have anything here. All right, I got a little T pin, but there is. I'm not sure if this is going to fit in here. But there's, you knock this little plug out, there's like a, a check valve and spring. And I like to just put something through uh, the orifice of the plug and just make sure that, as uh, you can see, this is kind of moving on, on its own. So this is okay, the spring and check valve are okay. Sometimes on early ones, these like get hot, they melt, but I think they've redesigned it since. And if they block the loophole, then your overdrive section We'll not get any lube and it's it, it's gonna be toast. Alright, so for the uh, shift kit that I installed, the transfer shift kit will be uh, changing the pressure regulator valve setup. The valve is used over again, but they give you different um, you know boost valves and stuff like that to use. Okay, let's drain this oil out here. Alright, our pump gears. Okay, looks pretty good. And that doesn't look that good. Now this pump, this pump is no good. Yeah, no, they got this, right in here is, is bad. This is very bad in here. So this pump is gonna have to be changed. So I'll see what uh, Transstar has in the way of, um, uh, you know, either reman or used. Uh, but as long as this is, uh, you know, this is no good. Can't can't use that. Okay, so this pump is going to be changed. And also, you see this this is that seal. Remember the video on the Ford front seals? This is the seal that's no good. This is the gray seal. And this is how it comes through from Ford, but those seals are no good. Alright, so this pump is shot, it's gonna have to be changed. Valve body here. Let's get rid of some of the oil. Okay. So we're going to take this section off here. These two bolts. All right. So we're going to open up the uh, section of the valve body here.
All right, so we're going to take this off. All right, this has a couple of valves in it, and you want to make sure that you know they're uh, nice and free. Here is the separator plate, and we got some check balls here. Um, it varies from model to model. You can have uh, from two to five. This has four. This is one, two, three, four, and you have a fifth possibility for a check ball here, but no check ball goes here in this model here. And the way I can tell that is, for instance, let me just wipe this here. Putting the plate back on here, okay, now we have two, two like bathtubs as they will call it. One here with a check ball, one here without a check ball, okay, as you can see. Now let me just turn my lights back on, give me one second. Okay. Now, the one that takes the check ball, you can see has two holes, and the one that does not has one hole, or really not even, you know, it's more like a square cut hole or uh, an oval hole. So you can see two holes takes the check ball, one hole does not. So that's how, um, you know, you kind of can determine for the most part uh, where the check balls go. All right, so I did want to share that with you. Let's dump this out, get these check balls out of the way. Okay, also, this, let's see. Okay, this valve train setup right here, this is the one, two, sorry. This one right here. All right, this valve train setup right here is the one, two shift valve. And there is a spring that's in here Okay, and this spring likes to break. Pretty common problem, which I think would, I think it's gonna give you a one, three shift. All right, so it's so common that when you get a transdoor shift kit, they actually included, you know, they include it in a small package uh, in the shift kit because it's getting to be a common problem. They probably, you know, uh, get it on the, on their tech line. So it became so common that they started adding that spring. Uh, so when you when you have when you do have this and it also depends on model year, uh, you want to physically take this valve train setup out and look at it and just to make sure the spring isn't broken because it may look okay uh, but it doesn't mean it's good. So if you do have this set up, and I think it goes with, again, model year, um, like maybe with four or five check balls in this section of the valve body, you'll have this set up. And I would recommend to take it out and physically look at that spring. I always change it, you know, since it comes in the kit, I'm gonna change it because they love to break. Okay, so I think that's it on this uh, 2000 E350 box truck with the 4R100. Uh, I'm going to start cleaning this unit up. This actually is an emergency job. It's a uh, work truck or a delivery truck. And this guy needs this thing back ASAP. So I'm going to get going on it. Uh, I thank you guys for watching and have a great day. We'll see you next one. All right, a couple more things on this 4R100. Uh, get back to the accumulator body. Uh, the accumulator piston and springs are in here, you know, you really can't, you really can't see them. Uh, and the springs do like to break. I have to take them all out because I do a shift kit in all the E4ODs and 4R100s. But if you decide not to do a shift kit, I would recommend uh, taking these end plugs out here. Right, you pop the clip out from the inside and then it's actually a threaded hole. You can put a valve body bolt in here and you can take the end plug out that way because these springs do like to break. Now, this, is, this isn't the accumulator body uh, out of that unit. That unit I had to get done because that's an emergency job. 
But I do have a couple of the springs out of the accumulator body that I put the shift kit in. Okay, this is one, and as you can see that this spring actually is intact, so this is fine. And then when I took another one out, this is what the spring had looked like. Okay, this thing was all busted up and, and it was inside the piston, I had to dig, dig it all out. So again, these springs do break quite often. And that's what actually, that's what it kind of looked like. It looked like that. And it was all shoved in the piston. So that's why each one of these, again, I have to take them out because I do transgo shift kits. Uh, so you just pop the clip out. You can get a valve body bolt, screw it on the end. I hold it with a plier and just give it a tap and it comes right out. So definitely, definitely check these springs. Okay, this one, this one, and this one, this is, I believe, is the second accumulator. And this, these are third and fourth here. Uh, so that's definitely um, something to check when working on these uh, units. All right, so let me just put this aside here. And one other thing that I did want to mention, uh, this is the race for the uh, low spray. Okay, and remember I was talking about the bushings, uh, how you're not going to knock bushing in a little further. So the bushings uh, kind of sit like this and right in the middle uh, there is a loophole okay, that you don't want to block. And this here has to get, when you put install this race, you have to line this hole up with the loophole. And then it will come out here and it will lube uh, the little sprig and the, you know, the rear section of the unit. I think this can only go on one way, um, but you just want to make sure that you kind of feel inside the case where the bushings are, where the loophole is, and then you can just kind of look down into the case. You should be able to see uh, uh, where the loophole you know, comes out inside the case and you line this hole up with that. I forgot to mention that yesterday. So just a couple more things on that. Uh, 4R100 I did want to mention. All right, once again, thank you for watching.